All right, welcome to Six Scale. Um, uh, today is August nineteenth. Um, let's uh, let's start with the first item on the agenda. Um, the first one is uh, VMI specific metrics. Um, so we had this discussion previously about um, having. Uh, well, the discussion was sort of about not having metrics that. Um, scale with the number of uh, objects that we create. And um, yeah, it's important for a lot of reasons, like we don't want to just sort of overwhelm Prometheus or uh, with a bunch of data. Uh, we want to be careful with uh, since that can affect scale. And, you know, since we're relying significantly on, on the performance measurements on metrics, we don't want to overwhelm it. Um, so with that in mind, um, there may still be some data that we could gather um, with sort of a subset um, of, of VMIs. So not the whole, the whole, um, and not every VMI, just the ones that, um, that sort of meet some criteria uh, that we, that we care about and we want to report about. Um, so that's, that's what this topic is kind of finding, you know, what, what areas where we'd want to know, um, specific uh, VMI data um, so that we can identify it or uh, or something um, and kind of and whatever has some has some um, description of, of what's happening. So I have um, some ideas around um, around this and see if they make sense. So um, for instance, right now we do um, a bunch of um, a bunch of measurements of performance. We report uh, every of timestamps that say like, okay, we do in each phase. Um, one one thing that would be interesting um, is if we were to have some sort of um, gauge that um, could capture sort of like how many VMIs are, are in each phase. Um, this could give us like a way that we could um, say um, like have a general idea of like, okay, what's going on in the cluster like. We're seeing a ton of VMI stuck in scheduling. Um, we already know like there's a slow performance there, and we're seeing a lot of them that are that are getting stuck there. You know, maybe we should investigate that. Um, that's one idea. Um, another one is um, VMI that take longer than expected, than over some threshold time for uh, for a phase. So like right now we're talking about thresholds, and we're going to do this in CI. How we're going to write We lost Ryan. And I was getting mad at my internet connection again. Oops.
Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Here I am. Sorry. Hey. All right. Uh, my internet dropped off again, so I'm tailoring from my phone. All right. Hold on. Let me see if we can. We'll cover this here. I'm sharing the document, so. Okay. Pretty yeah. Fancy. Thanks, Kevin. Let me see if um. Let me see if I can um. Oh, okay, migrate to you, Kevin. Okay, you're the host now. Okay, that's that's fine. All right. Um. Well, that works for me. All right. So let's uh. I. I don't know where I ended up getting dropped off there, um, but um, I'll just talk about that last point. Um, so the the that last point is the so VMI that took longer VMI that take longer than expected in some sort of threshold. Um, so the general idea is that if we have VMIs that are a little slow um, and we have a general idea of what um, slow is, you know, maybe something that we can configure. Um, then that could be something that whenever we notice it, um, we could capture um, VMI specific data. We have labels that are very specific to VMIs and we report those to Prometheus and then we could have a, something like a dashboard around it. So, so something that's very, um, so it, kind of the goal is having subsets of, um, of VMs running in, in the cluster so we can get very um, focused view on things that could be going wrong and kind of, so it makes it easier to, um, to look at uh, or even just notice things that are, that are kind of um, that are not working as expected. So what do people think kind of of this idea, um, uh, Alexa, that could be my specific metrics and you know, other, other ideas? Um, we already, I think we already have, like when we did the performance tests since uh, Marcel did, uh, there's already a metric showing how many VMs are in which state. Uh, do you want you to talk about more granular, like how long a VM stays in a state approximately or? No, okay, so th there is there is this one then, so we have, um, okay, I, I thought it was just a count though. I thought it just like incremented. Did, it, did we actually like, like I thought right now it's the number that we see, or that we have seen, that we have seen in a phase. Like do we, like, I don't think we decrement it. Um, wait, let me pull up my, my Grafana snapshot because I thought. Uh, what do you mean the number of in each phase? Like just counting? Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm thinking more of a gauge than a, count, a counter. So like we, if, if, we, if we have 50 VMIs in running, you know, at any given time we, we have a, um, we have a, our, our metric shows, you know, 50, you know, if we have 50 and, you know, scheduling and so on and so forth. If you look at the link I sent, you see the number of pending and it also goes down and it re gets replaced by number in running. Oh, yeah, it is. The, so we, the histogram has the count. So it okay. will be very similar to just have a count. So. Okay. So then we, then we are documenting it. Okay. I thought we weren't. Okay. Then, then, then this, never mind. And this one, I think, is this one's covered. So, okay, um, that's good to know. How about the second one? You know, what do people think of that? I don't know about a, a threshold, but um, I thought David was working on this metric that measures the transition time and not the amount of VMs, and that's a that's a different thing, I think. But and that's that's more in, in that where we could also have an alert if we want to yeah a threshold i th i think this maybe a you know a, an alert should be interesting to to have you know in a specific i don't know maybe dashboard for that you know where we can we, we could do something that relates to that Yeah, like, um, okay, that could work. Yeah, I mean, I guess like the ideas that I'm thinking is like Kevin, Kevin you shared that dashboard, like we can see um, in general how long things take. Um, and like if we were to do histograms of like say 99 percentile um, quintile for some of these, 
being able to identify uh, um, like, okay, this is, these are the super slow ones. Let's look more closely at them. Cause like when you when get to large clusters, like thousands of VMs, like where is our yeah, slow one? I don't know if I would do it on a VM basis because as we, we talked about that, it can be a lot of, a lot of labels. Um, but in general, like showing on the dash on a dashboard time spent, average time spent in um, scheduling, starting, pending, I don't know. We, we have yeah, that. That's, yeah. that's what my, yeah. So my point is, is that I, I agree with you. Like we, we don't want to have that many labels. But what I'm saying is that, you know, could we get away with the um, only labeling things in, in, in select cases? So only like, because we have, you know, it was slow, you know, it was whatever, it's over some threshold. So we're going to create, um, we're going to have a label for this that's that includes the, the VMI name because we want it to stick out. Hmm. That, I'm not sure if that is a metric thing or that could also be just Kubernetes events saying, hey, this VM is waiting way too long in its status. Um, Yeah, but we could, well, you know, maybe- Oh, that's hard to measure. Like, yeah, like, cause it, I, I think the idea is like, so if we have like, this is kind of the way we're doing the timestamps. Like, so like we have like, say, um, we we notice like, okay, we, we're going, we're changing phase, right? Like that's kind of how we do things. So like, we do like, we have a change phase um, function. And that's when we do like, we, um, we set the timestamp at that point. Um, at this point in time, we could do a comparison and say like, okay, was that really slow? Was that like, was that a really like looking at the, the two timestamps because we have the objects, was that a really slow transition or was that a like a reasonable one? Like, was that, I guess the question, was that an unreasonable amount of time spent? And if it was unreasonable, then we could flag it. We could say like, okay, um, this is kind of strange. Like, let's just, we'll add a label for this um, that includes the VMI name to make it stick out more. Yeah. I, I what, step what, more what, yeah. outside, you know, like uh, the alert that uh, Kevin mentioned looks more, you know, you know, suitable for that. Then because you have like, you can change that, you know, the alerts because, you know, this kind of um, values will change for different right. systems. So, and uh, it looks also something that we'll, we'll, you might monitor via Prometheus in it. So you already have the, the, the times. If you want to put like a threshold and, you know, rise an alert regarding that, I don't think maybe we should mark the VM, but just just use that like a you know outside and yeah, and, you, and verify that yeah you could also do it on a namespace basis but one one other thought on that was is all this phase transition monitoring i had that thought when we discussed it for the first time um it's not really anything we need to do uh in in our control plane it could also be a tool you run like uh, top um that can anybody can run, or you can run the cluster and expose to Prometheus because all it has to do is watch the VMI resource, like all VMI resources, and it can be done outside control and outside process, just monitoring Kubernetes, uh, having a Kubernetes watch on the VMI and recording this stuff when needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could build a tool that you, if if you say see like some stuff isn't coming up as as you want, you you do, bird CTL face monitor and it provides those metrics when needed. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is this, this, I guess, I think maybe we need like an, another, like, I think the kind of the way that I'm envisioning this is that it could be configurable because it, you're right in that it's like, it's gonna vary per cluster and also the workload and everything. Um, and I could see this value being con configurable based on whatever the workload is, but um, in terms of like, um, I think the use case it, it needs to be defined a little bit more in terms of like um, mm. how this would because I think like 
it's going along the idea of like we're we're going to do the performance in Prometheus or doing it through um, Prometheus for for our metrics. And so um, like I wouldn't expect another tool like we, you could. I mean, like I agree with you, you could, but but I mean, kind of I think along the same lines, we've we're going toward this. We're going toward using Prometheus for all of this. So it, I mean, I think it's possible. I think is the point. Like it's possible we could do it um, as long as it's not something that's. I think. Like I think, like I think there is a use case for it, but I think it needs to be a little bit further defined. But the, 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 but did, did did it make sense? Like um, everything that's based on fields on a Kubernetes resource does not necessarily have to be a metric in our control plane that we expose and have to have a feature toggle for or anything. It can be any Kubernetes client process doing that, creating that metric for us on demand. And if you care about it, you just deploy that and you get a metric or if you don't care anymore, you remove it again or you run it locally. Does that make sense? Uh, it might be a debug tools and it's something like that. So it's yeah, but, well, it, well, you mean keep it, keep patching the VMI. Is, is that what you're saying? No, like don't. It? This tool doesn't have to touch it. It just has to have a watch on the VMI resource on the status of the VMI resource only. It can actually work for any Kubernetes resource. Like this tool could watch transitions between any Kubernetes resource that has status and phase or yeah, any field status. And you see how long it spends in a certain time. It's nothing Kubernetes specific. Mm -hmm. it's just yeah, watching uh, uh, a Kubernetes resource for changes. Mm -hmm. I'm for yeah, a watcher, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, maybe that's something we could discuss in this context, I guess, kind of. Because it, it just, it's sort of, it wasn't really where I was going with this, but I understand what that perspective that we, that it could be sort of a tool. I mean, we what we're doing now with like, um, with our audit tool, right? We could do this. Like we could yeah. we could analyze the the timestamps and say, okay, this VM took too long. Like we could do that right now. Mm -hmm. um, we won't get we won't get anything in our dashboards for it. And that's I guess that's what my point is is that the 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 specific angle I'm looking at here is that are there any ways that we could take advantage of um, having VMI specific metrics in our dashboards. Um, so with just a subset of VMIs of, with cases that we care about, that's kind of what I'm mm. looking for. Yeah, I, but yeah, the, and this, this tool could also expose Prometheus metrics and you could run it in cluster. I just mean, it doesn't have to be in our control plane. Yeah. We don't need a, a toggle in our control plane saying monitor these VMs because it, this tool could be independent and do that for a label selector or, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think yeah. the control plane should be more general. So we shouldn't filter which VM we are analyzing. But, but uh, like an external tool could do that. Yeah, definitely. If you like, I could have a look at, at prototyping something like that and, and see if it fits what you what you meant, also getting it metrics and having a label selector or something. Well, Sounds how is it how simple. is it different though? How is this different though than like what we do right now in the audit tool? Like that's what I mean. Like it's the same thing, right? Like it's, it's not it's done. It's right now our audit tool does runs after. We we don't do it, we don't do a watch during. Uh, I think the audit tool That's right now only grabs Prometheus metrics, right? Mm -hmm. And this tool would do two things. It would create a watch on the VMI resource, maybe with a label selector, and uh, look at changes to status. And when status phase changes, it records a timestamp and adds that as a metric. And, and, I, um, and the metric part is, is separate. The idea is just to avoid Prometheus? No, no, it, it can expose Prometheus metrics. The uh, no, idea because... is to avoid exposing another metric in our control plane that is bound to some toggle on a VMI. Yeah, I don't know if I that think... even is necessary or makes sense, but yeah. No, but I, but I don't think that's a problem. Like I, 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 like my goal, like I kind of my point of bringing this up is that like I want to expose it being Prometheus. Like I'm making the assumption that 
that we would use mm. this through Prometheus. Like, I, I'm not making the assumption that like I would want to use this outside. Like, that's totally a valid use case, and we've kind of talked about this in the context of the audit tool. Like, but we started to go down the like a different route. But like, it doesn't mean we can't, you know, also add this. But that my 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 focus on this is just like so we can expose this in Prometheus. But I mean, if you think that like it's more valuable to not have this in Prometheus, I mean. I don't know. We can have that argument, but to me, like no, I, I agree. I want it in Prometheus as well. I just I'm, the the difference I'm saying is I don't think, or I don't want to teach our control plane to decide what metric to do based on a label or t some toggle on a VM. That's like if our control plane exposes a metric, it should be as safe and granular, uh, okay. uh, general as possible. And this process could bring more if needed. If it should be a separate process, I, I, I'm not sure about that. Okay. So yeah, I... ju just to make sure if I understood. So the, you want to have like a metric that say what is over the time, that the, the threshold, eh? how many VMs it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's lower, something like that. I, I'm I, thinking anything, I'm thinking over, like I'm thinking, we want any, it's a, the idea of the metric is something that it's a subset of VMIs, like, because we can't, like, we already talked to our last time how we don't want the, the number of, of um, labels to scale with the number of objects. So we want something to sort of limit the number of, um, like, we still, what I'm trying to find is a metric that can give us a more granular view while also not causing us to have a ton of labels that, you know, it scales with the number of VMIs that we have. Mm. Right, but I would say that if you cannot, so if you cannot just define what we want to see, so and why the metrics that we have right now are not enough, it will be just you know clear for me. So just to understand, I think why what we have is not enough is we count how many VMs are in status pending and when they switch but you don't know if there's like four vms that are stuck in pending forever because the metric itself is fluctuating you can't you, you don't get the transition time on average or at all or per percentile yeah we we don't know if there's like because of, say there's no t new timestamp that's been created on on one of them like you like you're right like we it makes it look like 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 that that vm is functioning just fine um but because we never had the transition we have no idea that like there's one there that's sitting there and then even if it, we did find one we wouldn't we wouldn't know which one it is like we would have to we have to scour a cluster and look for it but this is the way that the metrics you know should should go isn't it you don't really well, know that's which. that's what i'm asking like if that if we're if so if that's like because because i understand like this might not be like the right approach in terms of like like this might not be how the general pattern is for for doing this metrics so that's kind of where i wanted to go with this like is this something that we could see as reasonable or not mm -hmm. yeah so i would say that then the the name of the, the the VMI, I don't know if we 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 should have you know that we have we have the pod you know isn't it? Um, I don't even think we do. I, I it's it's there's nothing unique that it's only the phases in there, and then when they get into buckets, when they get allocated into buckets. So with that, I I just looked for the. For, for David's PR on the phase transition metric, that would extend that metric or would be a separate, like we have a metric telling how yeah. long it takes to go from one A to B, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but exactly. It's not so the, enough, right, or... well, see, so yeah, the idea is that, uh, we, the question is like, can we make it more specific? And the second question is, should we make it more specific? Okay, That's okay. sort of the, those are the things, because I think there are use cases that there's valuable information that's still there. Like, as you pointed out, Kevin, like you could have something that's stuck and you wouldn't know it. Um, you can also have something that was very, very slow and you wouldn't know which one and which VMI it is. 
So that that's what it's targeting those cases and, and to see if it's something that's feasible or if it's maybe this is not the right approach and, and you know maybe another tool is the right approach here or something. Okay, yeah, so I, I don't know if yeah. we well maybe maybe but I don't know if identify which GMI is the one that it's this lowest one. It should, should be the focus of the metric. So we know that there are VMIs that are slow, you know, and and then if they fail, yeah, we can. But we can go to the logs and check the logs of every all the VMIs and see which ones fail, and just debug that. That's the way that I'm doing actually. So and um, and uh, yeah. Uh, the other thing was, oh, yeah, so if it's pending forever, you see the counting of VMIs that are pending, you know, it doesn't go down. So you can see that there are some VMIs, you know, stuck in pending. Yeah, but if you have, like, churn in your zone, like, if you're constantly creating and deleting, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. No one's coming in, no one's leaving, you won't know. Um. The, what I could imagine the link I just sent is um, where the VMI transition time gets recorded right now. What I could imagine is depending on some condition, which is just a label or something, we, we just add the VMI name and maybe namespace to, to that labels list. And that would question is if you want to trigger it by a label or a namespace label or how you would... Yeah, it would be a name. That's that's exactly what I'm thinking, Kevin. It's, it's like, is that if, but it's it's sort of the question of when we do this. Like I'm thinking yeah. like, like it's, we 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 have this thing like, it's like I, like I wrote there, chase, change phase, like, you know, sets the time stamp. I think that's that function that you have here, that new VMI phase transition or something, um, one of those. But we, we change the, um, whenever we, the, the, we change a phase, we set the time stamp at that point in time, we could do a comparison and if the time spent is unreasonable, you know, whatever it is that we set the unreasonableness or unreasonable time at, then we add the VMI label, you know, and that I could see that being configurable. Yeah, yeah right. It, it would have to, because I don't think we could hard code something like that. So you would, you could like set a label, like, I don't know, metrics.cuper.io slash, uh, transition time threshold, I don't know, and set it to 10. And then if it's longer than 10 seconds, um, the label gets added. I think this complicates a lot. Yeah, it's it's complicated. But, yeah, this uh, is, it's definitely and, advanced, yeah. Because and, if, if yeah. for example, everyone that will run Kubvert needs to be very aware of that, you know, because the metric will never, we, will not work if, someone doesn't configure it correctly. I, I yeah, that, 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 that's why I thought about doing it in a dedicated tool so it doesn't have to be part of our API and everything. Yeah, I, I think like if for this kind of specific kind of threshold, it, it shouldn't be in the control plane. Yeah. It should be external, yeah. Like uh, as, as we mentioned, so I think even the Grafana dashboard, Maybe it's possible to create kind of threshold so you can, you can, verf, you know, just have things that are higher than some, you know, some. Uh... The only more usable approach I could think of was, would be a development setting on the CR, but then again, people might enable this and blow up their Prometheus because they didn't yeah. expect it. And um, yeah, I don't know. I would like to see the metric. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, but. And I'm VM's, scared. <laughs> yeah, VM stuck in a phase that that it's interesting. And yeah, I don't know. Um, because like if it's stuck in what in scheduling, what does it mean? It means that the pod was not created, and maybe the pod was not scheduled. Because once the pod is created, it it should never stuck, and it. It um, can still stuck in pending because storage is too slow, or or something is wrong. It can always get stuck. Um. 
in I think. But then it should show in the log. You know, when you describe, it, you know, you should have an event for that. You know? Even scheduling should show on the events that it's not enough having a lot of memory or something like yeah um, in, yeah yeah I, I don't know i don't know the if... problem is if you're handling a thousand vms it's hard to look at that by hand mm -hmm. you need some way and then i think that's where ryan is going at with the metric that it's easier to spot problems and maybe alert them problems mm -hmm. I'm wondering how Kubernetes is doing that for quads because I don't know if they do. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they do. In Kubernetes, yeah, uh, stuff is more good... based around events, and, and events are are more like, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a good topic. We should spend more time, you know, yeah. Yeah, dedicate some time to think more about that. You know? Yeah, I can do a mailing list thread or something. Maybe we can something to follow up on. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Let's go to the next topic then. Um, okay, so the Kubernetes has an um 120 version greater than 120, um, greater than or equal to 120 is API um, priority and fairness. Um and at least as far as I could tell, there was not a policy created for Qbert. And this would be an interesting thing to do um, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, one of them is that you know, we, we wanna make sure that our requests to the API server are not inhibited by anything else. And we also wanna make sure that we're not uh, a noisy neighbor and that if we're some reason our components out of control, we're not hogging the API server um, so it, it protects us and it protects um, others in the cluster. Um, so this is, um, we could define this per component. We can do a lot of things with this, um, but uh, um, the general idea is that, you know, we can create some policies around this with a flow control and a priority level config. Um, and there's some good examples in the, in the link there of what we can do. And there's already some existing examples if you, in the, by default in the cluster um, right now, um, if you have a one, two cluster, you'll see that there's a bunch. Um, so what do, what do people think about this topic? Um, I think this is something that would help us with scale um, as even performance. Oh, this is definitely nice. I think it's something that I, I always think about that, but I, I, ne I never come up with some conclusion of that. For example, in the test that I'm doing and the test that I, uh, you know, the CI uh, environment, um, we have the Kubernetes master nodes dedicated to some nodes. And at some, and somehow, I, I never did that, but I think that the kubevirt, you know, control, you know, controllers should be in the master nodes, you know, and should be sharing the worker nodes. Of course, the, you know, the virt handler and the virt launcher will, of course, will be in the Worker nodes, but the other the other controllers uh, should be dedicated in there. But it, it's related to that, and it, so it's different approach. Is isolate I, isolate the mods, or or have this priority and fairness, which it's nice. I I I didn't know that, so I I never seen this before. So and it will be interesting. Priority and fairness is a bit. It's a, a, different story kind of it's um it's more telling the api server what requests are prioritized and oh, okay. uh who to rate limit and when to rate limit and like not to rate limit kubert or something like that uh as much as some random process okay so it's different than okay it's it's not neighbor and nice neighbors then related to that uh, it, it yeah. is on an api request basis on the read yeah so if you, if we have other CRGs in the cluster, we can prioritize Kubernetes. Yeah. yeah, think of this as like Kubernetes' way of protecting itself. Um, like this is just like a an API to make sure that um, that you just that's you know someone just doesn't overwhelm the API server. Um, so it it comes with some um, so kind of the it comes with some of the, the features that come with it is that you know we can make sure that. You know, our requests are 
going to be get a shot at the API server. Um, and we can and we can isolate them, you know, based on whatever, you know, the user, the um, namespace, the service account, all sorts of things, the verbs that we use, the APIs. Um, so we can make sure that those requests like by our invert handlers, for example, are are getting um, are not being interrupted by perhaps someone else that's using the same API. Mm -hmm. So and then the configuration it's it's in the Kubernetes itself. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if we document, you know, how to configure those things uh, in Kubernetes for our okay. modules, you know, have like a straightforward, you know, demo for how to do that, it would be nice. It would be nice, you know, because it's not anything to change in the Kubernetes itself. It's just how to apply that for Kubernetes. You know? It kind of is. Or we can like. With our control installation, we can provide a flow schema just we provide a um, RBAC group or permissions and stuff. That's just another new resource that you can create to uh, designate some traffic is important. Yeah, so I think this one is also needs like a file discussion. So I, I'm already doing this is something I was looking at because um, like there was there's a bunch of information that you can get from it. Um, in addition to like the features I just mentioned, like because you can do, um, because you can sort of filter by API, user namespace, all this stuff, just all the general RBAC rules, you can, um, you can, you can isolate traffic. Like you can, um, based on, you know, what gets into these queues that are part of the priority and fairness. So you can see like, like for example, if Qvert is creating like a ton of list requests, we'll we'll see them get queued up, and when we can actually have metrics that that could do this even on a per verb basis if we wanted to. Um, so there's like there's actually some, in addition to like protecting ourselves, there's also some things we can probably learn um, about um, about like what our traffic patterns are right now. So there's I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, you know, for, for learning things as well as just protecting ourselves. So I, what I'll do is like, I'll create a follow-up discussion on this. Um, I have I already have like a document going in terms of like some of the ideas I have um, and kind of do a study, like how much memory this, you know, how much requests per second we can take and um, you know, what our queues should be and stuff like that. I can do a discussion for that on the mailing list. I'd love to see that, like the, the priority of fairness being implemented or used by Qbert because it's a um, a kind of big thing for the Kubernetes for Kubernetes for the API Kubernetes API and and it's still beta but I think it should at some point it should go get to a point where it's mandatory for some things in Kubernetes because that's um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely nice yeah. okay all right so we'll do another we'll do another follow up for that one okay. All right, let's go to the, the next one. This one's a pull request. Oh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not sharing. I'm, Thanks, I'm sharing. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, I thought I was, I moved to it. Wait, how, how do I switch tabs and uh, there you go. So, there you go. Mm. Okay. Um, this one's, um, this one's cool. Um, does, uh, is Eunice here? Um, do you want to talk about this one? Oh, there's a PR. He's kind of says yeah. Yeah. So um, I've gathered some some data as far as far for the logging and and uh, it seems like during um, high uh, high uh, traffic we we see a lot of logs. Some of them are either duplicated or or could be co consolidated into into ones to. Um, like um, we we could just save a lot um and uh, and in this pr I, I tried to do it um and so some of the logs i've moved them to either like higher verbosity uh which are in the like hot paths or like here in this um execute uh, method. I, I tried to consolidate these two um, VMI and domain uh, logs that we 
previously um, logged as, as two separate, um, which resulted like in, in lo lots of um, kind of du duplication and, um, and yeah, like, um, right now, I, I think it's 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 also much better to uh, to search for for given status um, um, having having those two uh, in one place. Mm, yeah, and and I think uh, I think that's it. And you saw like how like how much was the re reduction of logs? Uh, did you see when like because these were. I think I saw like in the graph, they were pretty significant, some of these. Yeah, so if you look in, in the graph, so it, it was like some um, over some time, right? Um, so it, it's not not like on, on the one around because like the, the logs are in, in millions. So we we are just saving uh, like, for example, like here in this, in this um, for loop, I think we are saving around like six millions um, um, logs and the, the whole like in the whole like interval we collected 40 millions so it's um it's uh, let me give you quick math it's uh, yeah it's uh, around like 50 percent um so um, and th this is just just for this this particular uh, place and and um, and uh, in in overall it should be I think like 35 50 percent of, of the locks should should be should be removed uh, with with my changes. Um, of course, like assuming that the verbosity is is set to two. Uh, because otherwise it's it's uh, yeah it's different. Well, cool. one console. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Ryan. No, no, I, I I didn't have anything else. That was go ahead. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, one concern I have with uh, this specific part is that um, I mean, if my math is wrong, this is just is reducing the amount of logs of this part by half, kind of. Because it's combining logs, the only problem I see with it is yeah, and and the, <laughs> then there is this processing event log, which also so it's oh yeah, this, this one, two yeah. two thirds yeah yeah okay this this yeah this could probably okay um, the only thing I I I probably I can see with those combined logs is that there is a not insignificant trend of doing um, log-based analytics and metrics, uh, also load power by Grafana and stuff, where combined logs can be hard to extract data from. I don't know if anybody's doing that and has more experience with it, but um, for those use cases, it's easier to have dedicated messages for two things that are two things. Does that make sense? Yeah, I agree that, that there is um, some trade-off, um, and um, I, I'm not not fully sure, um, like what, what's the what's the right approach here. Um, like the, the problem is that, for example, like in in this else if where domain exists and VMI not, we, we are kind of like trying to cre recreate this VMI reference, right? Instead of uh, a logging domain. Um, and and uh, it could potentially be um, big confusion about this. But on the other hand, you, you don't seem to have much more information from the, uh, from the domain than um, than the VMI and uh, and the the we I think we would need to think what we are actually getting by by splitting this into two um, and if, if there is any any particular reason to to do that. Um, okay. Well, I would. Um, I mean, we can take it up on the PR maybe. 
I think I think it's a great change. I think it's like we're, we're reducing a lot of logs, uh, reducing the logs significantly. That's a really good change. Cool. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Thanks, Inus. Um, uh, next one's the per scale load generator um, needs approval. Yeah. So, uh, Brian revealed that last time, and you did the, you know, LGTM label, but it's still like need some approval. And yeah, I think we need um, David or Roman, or I don't know, Kevin. Do you have a? I, I don't have approval. Um, I don't I have neither. approval rights. You don't either. Okay. We'll need um, David or Roman to do it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Let's wait for that. Okay. All right. The next one, um, the performance evaluation. So it looks like you did another one, Marcelo. Yeah. Um, I did like the, the, you know, the performance nods again, and this is the update with the, I would say the, at least the master branch for just week. <laughs> you know, it was like the, the last one, but it's fair enough you know, uh, update. Um, it's failed to create 500 VMs. And I was expecting that. Let me explain first. So uh, I was doing another test, as you guys might remember, how many VMs I can, you know, pack in a node. Actually, it's the, the next uh, test that I, I listed here in the, in the meeting. So and then I can create at least uh, a little bit more than 300 uh, VMIs per node. Um, however, here in this test, I'm using three nodes. So I would expect at least 900 VMIs in the cluster, but with 500 fails. Um, I didn't collect all the logs, so unfortunately, I don't know why they failed, um, but they failed. And But we can check the Grafana, you know, uh, matrix. This is also the update Grafana uh, that I have. It might be interesting also to see. And basically, I see. Um, I can go back here just to remember. Okay, so yeah, first of all, we can go to this. If you I don't know who is sharing. If you can, you can go to the VMI uh, creation time. Yeah, this one uh, that is in the middle. Yeah, let me, let me try to zoom in because. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I tried to do the snapshot as you suggested before, but sometimes mm -hmm. it's work. Sometimes it's like, I put like a one hour, you know, for the, maybe it's too much data. And you need to increase the timeout um, when you create a snapshot, it asks you for a timer, you could have been 10 seconds or something and it should be fine. Yeah, I put one hour, and even even though it fails to create the snapshot, so maybe it's my internet. I, I don't know. It didn't work, so um, that's why I put this um, screenshot here. But I will definitely try the the snapshot uh, later if it works. Okay, so things that are interesting here is. Okay, let's take a look in this uh, two last uh, ones, which is actually 400 VMs and 500. So 500 failed, but 400 worked. And we see this, uh, you know, phase, for example, the running and then the schedule and then scheduling, uh, especially for 500, uh, 400. Uh, did you see that? It got scheduled with five minutes. Oh, here's night five percentile, okay? So it not means that all VMs were super slow like that, but the, the worst ones. So we get like a five minutes was scheduled and then it took more five minutes to actually start to run. And I, it's expected because I don't know, well, we are trying to create a lot of VMs per node, but it's maybe, you know, you know, too long, you know, to, to create that. Um, and it's just something interesting to, to, to see. Uh, the other one, it's the, it's the other metric that's related not to the VMI, but for generally for the phase. 
and uh, I stack them and then we can see how much you know in general it was taking of course it's the scheduling time it's the one that it's taking more time and then we have the scheduled and the running which uh, looks a little bit mismatching isn't it from one to another but again the vmi creation time is just taking the the, the worst case scenario so and that we can see like the long running happens here there so yeah the, the the other things that we can oh first of all if we go to the top uh, remember the, one question on yeah. on that those crafts real quick um that is 400 500 pms right you can say yes. the graphs are very close together on the numbers which could mean that we reach a limit at 400 that 500 is only filling a bit but 600 like, it would be interesting if 600 goes up higher or if it also caps out on the five minutes somehow on scheduling if that's our yeah i tried yeah. to create more however as i mentioned the 500 uh failed yeah and actually the namespace got stuck you know it didn't delete and oh, okay and the test didn't you know continue with more VMs, but um, I, I'll try to run it again, yeah, to see if I can reproduce that with more VMs and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, we are definitely reaching a limit here. Yeah. Okay. And 500, yeah, 400 and 500. But it, a limit in the system, isn't it? Because again, I have another test creating 300 per, oh, then it's 300. But it was 300 per node. And it was, you know, working fine. And it's the only failed now 500 here. We can, if you see the VM count that we were mentioning, yeah, the, the now below, yeah. yes, this one. We can see that it's failed and running. And, And then it was like many VMs fail with 500. Also, the another metric that I put here, it's the REST, you know, rate limit duration. Yeah, this one. And this should be fixed with the Euromas PR to increase that. But if we are definitely, you know, reaching a lot of, you know, uh, go, you know, throttling limits here for the API request. And maybe it's related to that. You know the errors that we are seeing and this is low down that we are seeing a lot with it might be related to that it would be interesting yeah, to see what what gets the rate limit the most yeah marcella i was wondering because uh, it would be cool to see a comparison like you have here it's like what you exactly what you have plus with um an increased um qps and burst to see the uh what we end up with see how the graphs compare yeah, I think the pair yeah, they, was not merged yet, but okay. Yeah, well, maybe the next one you do, um, that that would be a cool one to do. Um, that'd be awesome to see if what uh, see how it makes a difference now that it's configurable. The other one is um, if you scroll down, Kevin. Um, this I'm wondering if um, like you see how we have the VM count, we get some we get some failed. I wonder if those scheduled VMs are going from scheduled to failed, and maybe that's why it levels off. Right there. Wondering if those. That's that's what, wonder if those. That's what's like. We're just not getting a little. Or that's like where we're going to fail. Something like that, maybe. Mm hmm. Which could also explain why the graph above is not going up because it's just, yeah. yeah. They're just dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that graph on the right with the phases. So, is this does that mean like um, like the far right um one there? Like it's that means five minutes in scheduling, and then and then it means like a minute and a half in scheduled. Is that what it means? Like they're stacked like that? Well, which which one? So the VMI phase transition latency. Does that mean that you spent? five minutes in scheduling of the total end to end timers. I mean, you spend five minutes in scheduling and then um, a minute, um, like a minute and a in half. Scheduled. 
yeah it's scheduled and then and then the last bit there and into from scheduled to running like, yeah is that what that means okay it, yeah this, this metric it's it's like a general so it will be like a it's not per vmi like the other one that we have the vm creation time this is the combination of all the vmis in this phase and uh, it's we get some directions of how how the vmis are spending in each phase so um are you excluding pending or is because it, it should also be pending at, at first in, yeah, let me check here. I, I think it, I had it here, but it's not show up. So uh, yeah, that's an interesting part. Like scheduling is already like scheduling. We can't do much about because the scheduling of the pods. I think so. Um, yeah, I have the pending, and uh, it's not showing up. So, we, but we do have pending, isn't it? For some yeah. reason, I think I think, I, we, I think so. I, th I think uh, David tried to fix that before, isn't it? Maybe I've the PR didn't in... merge. I, I don't know. I don't remember. He, he no, I, 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 I'm like pending that. in my in my in my metrics. Okay, so yeah. it, it worked. Maybe I'm looking at a different metric. I don't know. I can't yeah, see it right should, now. It shouldn't be there. Okay. Well, maybe we can, Marcel. I think that we can. Let's uh, next chance you get. We'll, you can try with the QPS change, and let's do the measurement, and then we'll see if pending shows up for that yeah. one. Then. We can. That would be you know, it's gonna be really interesting to see. And yeah, because if pending is a big pound of part of scheduling, then we have a problem. If not, if pending is relatively small and and it's only scheduling is that big, uh, we can't do much about it. And the only part that's really us is the top part, and that seems to be growing okay. Yeah, you, but if you see the VM VMI creation time, it's ten. Uh, you know, in the left, and here is smaller, maybe because the pending is not showing up. You know, because yeah, I, I would ex I would expect pretty. something similar. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, we're we're at time. Um, there is one more topic. I don't know. If, can we cover this in like in like thirty seconds here, or do we need to um, push this to next time? Yeah, I, I it came up yesterday. That's that's mine. Um, wait, let me sh uh, share a different screen. Um, David asked yesterday on my uh, bug fix for the GoRoutines if we can test that somehow, and we decided that, like it's it's hard to test. And one thing I wanted to bring up is that we could or should somehow with those density tests measure or be able to define. Uh, a way of, of seeing regressions like that by mm -hmm. checking like some th some threshold of go routines or CPU load that is allowed to be before and after. Like if, if after there is more, we can alert on that somehow. I I still don't know how to do the Prometheus metric on that, but it would be great to in our future dashboards or alert see this PR added go routines that did not get cleaned up or uh I don't think it can be a funk test as long as funk is not talking to Prometheus. Like funk test well, we can, is having I a mean, hard the, time. Well, the, like, I mean, I think the framework, like I'm kind of classifying the framework that we've been building as sort of like a functional test framework. Oh like, yeah, okay, yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I mean by this. Like we could, mm -hmm. like we do density testing there as part of the density testing, we can test for regressions. I think we just haven't defined this yet. Like we just, this is, I think once mm -hmm. uh, Marcelo's load um generator emerges um i've got the thresholds like ready i'm going to hook up to marcelo's load generator and then i think we have sort of like the the ground floor like we have sort of the the foundation for what we want to do for like functional tests and then i think having a functional test for this exactly would be you know using that existing like everything that's there and just kind of putting in some code to say like okay here's before yeah. you know here's like Years after or something, I don't know something we could like here or here's what we expect or something like here's we're not we're not leaking. Well, I, I guess you know this one you just you create you create a bunch of VMs you delete them and we see that there's no um, right there's no leak yeah so it could be part of the audit tool uh, audit tool scope for example um, I think that's what they've mentioned but yeah I just want to raise attention that we should yeah have a look at that.
I agree. So I, what I'll do is let me create, I'll create an add it to like my issue tracker section to make yeah. sure that we, we yeah. have something that we, we eventually get to for this. Okay. All right. We're at time folks. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, I'll see you all online. Have a good day. You too. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.